Powered by Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook. Wow. At least a team with a Maple Leaf on their crest won a game. So, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Welcome to Game Over World Juniors. Now, I wish. I mean, that would be a bit more fun of a stream. But welcome to Game Over Toronto. My name is Fuad Suleiman. My name is Lauren Williamson. And, uh, yeah, that went about as well as the last time a Seattle team came to Toronto. Love just about as well. That was, whew, that was something there, Lauren. Um, and it was, I didn't think a performance could be as bad as the last night's performance at the Scotiabank Arena that the Raptors had. But, whoo, that, that was close. That was something. That was bad. That was really bad. I, it was no good, very bad. Very bad. And Very normally, bad. I, I'm even when they lose, I always have to have a segment. What was the positive we could take out of this game? And the first period, the first period, the first period where they had a lot of shots. Right there, you go. Nine to three shots were nine to three. At and the end of the period, we were like, hey, Andrew, hey, we have a we have a we have a Doctor Jekyll game where we have the good guy, and then they came back as Mister Hyde in the second and third, oh, and my. and we are left to pick up the pieces. And Listen. And or then, if you're me, you change screens so that the big screen is the World Juniors and the small screen is the Leafs game. Hey, there. I mean, like cr all credit to Chechia for, for taking it that far, but it, Canada finally reclaiming their place atop the hockey universe with the uh, overtime winner. And uh, thank you to everybody for joining and joining us. We were going to delay the stream a little bit until that game ended because we knew nobody was going to watch us. There was whilst, a debate. Whilst that was going on. But uh, before we get started, and we we buried the lead here, we have ourselves a wonderful guest, Mr. Cabby Richards is going to join us. Uh, the one and only. We, uh, and before we get to that, we are going to uh, reach out and thank our sponsors for today, Sports Interaction. They think you know which way it's going to go. Make your bet with Sports Interaction. Whether it's hockey, football, or basketball, Sports Interaction's got you covered. That pregame, live, and play are one of our many prop bets. Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all sports betting has to offer. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash stpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash stpn. 19 plus, please play responsibly. Now, I mean, I hope I hope you guys won some money by betting Jared McCann, former Leaf, to score that goal because, oh my goodness. Anyway, before we get to all of that, because we're going to get to all of that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring on our guest at this very moment. Our guest has been at this media game for a long time. He's worked for all the networks in Canada and in the U.S. He has interviewed the likes of Michael Jordan, Kevin Hart, uh, all, every NHL player, and of course, the iconic interviews with the late, great Kobe Bryant. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Cabral, Cabby Richards. Welcome, 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 welcome. Happy Thursday, Cabby. Yes, 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 Woo! yes. How are we feeling? How are we oh, feeling, Leafs Nation? Happy to have you. Happy to five... have you. Well, thank you. It's wonderful <laughs> to be seen by you. And thank you for the generous introduction. I, I try. You know, my introductions, um, I always try to be very over the top, but then sometimes I forget what I'm going to say. And I'm like, okay, just get, just get, just get it going. It's going to be rambling. So... Um, would you say it's time to panic Le for Leafs Nation? Should everybody just lose their mind and I wonder, abandon all hope? I wonder if I should go get a bottle of whiskey and just, it's a Thursday night, Leafs lose 5-1, just have a little one. I mean, already just smashing just a one finger resolutions. Pull? Yeah, just like a pinky. Just like Yeah, oh, just a little bit. I mean, yeah. I, I settle, I have to be somewhat coherent, so I settle for Bengali spice chai. It's quite oh. good. Yeah, okay. it's You're good stuff. Team, man. No, it's like try. <laughs> Guys, it's it's it, we're not even at the All Star break. Like, yeah, we you know the the, the famous St. Louis Blues of 2019 were in last place. Were the Gen 31 last place? Yeah, won the so yep. there's there's now just it's game 39. That, what's that? It's only game 39. It's not even game 42. We're not even right. in the second half yet. But also like Toronto's. I don't know if they fall into third in the Atlantic, but Toronto's still in the mix. And, you know, it's even though the goaltending's been kind of shoddy and Matt Murray has played, actually played pretty well before tonight. Uh, and, and giving a back-to-back -back five goals on your home ice, never a, a recipe for success. 
but let's let's pump the brakes. Let's if the if the hand is near the panic button, let's go ahead and just put it back in our pockets <laughs> for now. Put a safety wait, glove. <laughs> yeah. Now, put on a uh, mitt. Put on those like the baseball with... sliding mitt. The baseball sliding mitt. The, oh the yeah, baseball that, sliding I was, mitt. I was thinking like the thinsulate like mitts that you always lose. Don't like, touch it. it. Like, don't touch yeah, it. You need you need the idiots. I always had the idiot string <laughs> forcing through my my jacket so I wouldn't lose my my mitts. But yeah, so put some mitts on. But don't we don't need to go near the panic button yet? In my estimation, how do you guys feel about the season so far? You know, I would say that like I with these streams, I always kind of like to be the calm, the calmer, the nuanced guy. I'm like, okay, okay. guys, let's let's find some guys. Sometimes you know we get some tweets, or we get ch- the people in the chat saying, you know, after a bad game, we'll be like. We got Trey Morgan Riley. You got you got to send down this person. You got to send down this person. And I'm like, guys, got to calm down here. We got to got to relax. Got to look at the the whole picture here. Yeah. Now I have I have a friend, and you you guys probably have friends like this who are hyper reactive, just like, and you have to remind them in the group chat, like, bro, do you even watch sports? Like, you're freaking out in the first period or the second inning of a baseball game or the first quarter in a basketball game. There's so much of the game to be left to be played. And there's so much of the season to be played. I mean, those like knee jerk reactions are, you know, like personality trait number one for most sports fans, for a lot of, a lot of fanatics, fanatics, but uh, it's, it's great that you can, you can have some, you can be calm, take a, take a 30,000 foot view of the season and just be like, you know what? There's, there's a lot more, uh, uh, trail to t- um, a lot more terrain to traverse in order to get, you know, to get to April. And then we can start freaking out in yeah. the first couple of the games in the first round. If, I'm saving if, it till April because I, yeah. I want to be true to myself. I want to be like, I want to be intellectually honest, but yeah. if things go wrong in the playoffs, I will be Stephen A. Smith talking about the Knicks. I will be, I'll be like, this is, this is terrible. This is blasphemous. I will be, yeah. yeah. Right. I might I, flip I, my desk. I might but, flip oh. my desk. We were already sort of planning for that, but we we appreciate you giving this, bringing some levity and some some calm to the deep breaths to the Leafs nation here. Well, and let's not forget, they started off the season and they had a, a terrible beginning, right? And we were all like, what the fuck are we going to do? Yeah. And then and then all of a sudden they turn it around and they have a great, essentially like seven They're weeks where- Unbeatable. Just ridiculous and playing yep. so well. And then, you know, they even said on the broadcast, the last few games, they get away from them. Uh, up until a few games ago, they had one of the best goal differentials in the second period. And, you know, last game in this game, they let essentially 10 goals in. Right. Like, that's, oh, yeah, they're not playing well in the second period like they have been so far this season. So, sure, it's troubling, but it's nothing they haven't already dealt with this season. Right. That's true. Yeah, that's wow. I didn't, I didn't realize that that was they had that strong of a goal differential in the second period. And then was it was it 10 goals in the it was four Close to it. I'll check. Four, I don't I don't remember yesterday. tonight. Right. Maybe or producer three. Rob can pull up how many goals they scored in the second period or in is, last is three or four. Oh, wait, you mean in the St. Louis game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they at least four in, I think, in that game. And then in this in the second period, they get uh hey, let- one, two. Yeah. It was brutal. Brutal. For, 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 I'm sorry, I miss I mispronounced that. Yeah. No, you got it you got it right, actually. You did for, very well. Um, I've heard I've heard far worse pronunciations. <laughs> well, I, I am sorry. My name is Cabral no, and people have been mispronouncing my name my entire life. So I, I feel you, bro. And I, I apologize for butchering yours. No, no, yours. it was good. No, it was good. You got it. You mentioned off the top, like um, comparing, you made, you made a, a reference to like the a Seattle team coming to Toronto and doing damage. Like the Seattle Mariners broke our hearts, the the Jays hearts in the, that yeah. two game wild card. Um, I love baseball scores and I know goalies don't and coaches don't because they preach defense, 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 because defense wins championships, but offense sells tickets. So yeah. like recently, you know, with the six, the six, five game, I mean, Toronto was on the wrong side of that, but I love that. Like anytime yeah, Connor McDavid fun. can it's get fun. like seven, two, they, you know, Edmonton put up a touchdown the other day against Seattle and yeah. I was in my living room. I was just like pumping my fist. Um, there was, wasn't, was it Vancouver and Seattle? There was a 9-8 game this year. 
And oh, uh, the other day, Ovi, when Ovi had his uh, his hat trick, 9-2 against the, the Habs, and then like an absolute legend took a photo with all the Habs, like moms. the Habs mothers. <laughs> yeah, I've heard like you're just a you're just a That's unit in that savage. regard. But yeah, I, I like baseball scores, and tonight was not quite a baseball score, but I mean five one. If you're if you're on the other side of that, I, I know the tenor and the the vibe of, of this uh, game over broadcast would be uh, a lot different. Oh, we'd be, we'd be quite happy. We would be quite happy if we were on the other side of the 5-1. But yeah, no, I agree with you. I love, I do like the high scoring in hockey. I it's mean, good I, for the sport. Good for the sport. I mean, it, it, every sport is looking to have more points in it. Like that's just, you look at the NBA where every night someone is dropping 50 points. Somebody, Donovan yeah. Mitchell had 70, 71, 71 points. Yeah, Almost 70. as much as the Raptors had in three quarters last night. So points... <laughs> More goals, it's good for the game. But the Leafs did not put up any goals, which well, they got put up one goal. They gave us one goal. But um, his one goal. After yeah, they I, were talking about how bad he was playing, which he's been playing well. He just hasn't been any rewarded. But you want the real dagger of this whole game. Uh-oh. And this is just this is just this game in a box, okay? I gotta find Jared out Mc- one. Jared McCann, right? The three one goal. The Jared McCann three one goal. Jared McCann has more goals than Almost any other leaf except for William Nylander and Austin Matthews. Is that and, real? Yeah. Yeah. I Jared mean, McCann is is cooking. And like wait, I thought he only is 18, 18 goals is 18. more than Mitchie? Yeah. Mitchie doesn't have 18. And 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 Tavares. Yep. Oh wow. Yep, yep, yep. Also, thank you, producer Rob. Leafs had three goals in the second last game, three in the Colorado game. They're very strong in the second as a whole. So so Cabby, one of the funny things, one of the funny running gags and it never fails of this show it's like jared mccann was a former leaf okay for about a week but on paper his contract said toronto maple leafs now right right he, traded, he was never assigned a number right he was never like yeah, he never he got was, a jersey number they right? traded x prospects for him to get him and then we're like every leaf fans like after the loss to montreal we were sour and we're like oh we got this 24 year old guy who scored 70 points in pittsburgh and then all of a sudden, kidding. we see not <laughs> protected kidding. in favor of Justin Hall. Now, that may have been the most baffling move of the Kyle Dubas era because I'm like, in a vacuum, if you if a, if a GM called and said, I will offer you a Justin Hall or a Jared McCann, your number would be blocked and reported probably to the CRTC to have your number removed. <laughs> like, like, that's how bad that trade would be. You'd be, you'd be put on a list. For you'd sure. be on a list if you offered yeah. that. Like, I think people with pitchforks outside for sure. Completely taken out by everybody. But yeah, I feel like, I, I don't know, like, wh- what do you think it is about these former Leafs or former peripheral Leafs coming in and scoring? Because it's like the sitcom writers are running out of, like, the gag is getting thin, but they keep going with it. It's like Fresh Prince with Jazz gets thrown out. Every episode gets thrown out of the house. It's, well, you, you could probably make a case that every team's fan base feels the same way. And I mean, <laughs> when we saw when we saw Nas win a cup with Colorado, I, I know that like, well, actually, I, I don't have the data, but gut feel is probably like 78% of the fan base. Like, why didn't we send like sign him to an offer or why do we try what like why do we get rid why do we let Nas go and you know now he's in Calgary tearing it up or whatnot and so the Jared McCann thing is interesting because he's he's on pace to set a career high in goals I think is 27 28 ish somewhere in that ballpark uh, he's gonna Justin crush that ball- this year for sure he, he should yeah he should yeah um it's so hard to project but they're you're like they're like that I'm sure that trade is in with games like tonight, just in the, the thorn of the side of the fan base, just like, was, we won't. It's like in the Lannisters, like the North remembers. <laughs> yes. we, we absolutely do. Like, as soon as I, that goal went in, well, he got the assist on the first goal. And I wrote it in my notes. I said, okay, he got an assist. Um, it might be worth mentioning. He gets a breakaway or a, close to it, snipes it home. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. It was the, when he scored, I knew that they were going to lose. I was just like, I just have to watch the end it's of the side- game. <laughs> Sideshow Bob stepping on the rake just yes. over and over again. Yeah, oh. that's what it was like in the Simpsons. Like it's it's hilarious. Like, and we mean we watch every game pretty closely. And it, it's even like guys that I like forgot played for the Leafs. Like it was 
like who was one it was like Callie Rosen scored a goal like like at that point it's yeah. like it's intentional like there's this is scripted somewhere in the universe <laughs> well so and Cabby, you watch a lot of sports right so do you find that this is like common in other sports like when t- when players get traded from one team to another do they have a tendency to go on tears against their old team and just be like I'm gonna wreck your life tonight and make yeah, you regret your decision it's like it's like seeing your ex girlfriend with a new with a new boyfriend, and you just like you need to show up. You need to put on a show. Um, the other day, you guys, we were talking. We we're you um you briefly mentioned the Raptors when Norman Powell played. He was Cooked. now in the Clippers, and he hadn't played in Toronto since he got traded to Portland. He yeah. scored like thirty two or something. Went off in the fourth quarter. So those you know those revenge games are real. Like that narrative is real because we're talking about humans. And if you got traded, you're always, you might love some of your former teammates, but you're going to feel a type of way for the team, the organization that you let you walk out of the door or traded your ass somewhere else. And it shows the next, if it's not the next time you play, then it's the time after I think of um, Patrick line a this year, he played in Winnipeg last year. Didn't have, a, it was like so much part didn't score, but this year in his second game in Winnipeg, he scored a goal or scored two, I think, actually. Producer Rob, you can you can check that. I think he scored two um this season. You're looking okay. Um, so yeah, uh, Lauren, I think that that narrative um it translates. Is, um, translates, yes, and comes to fruition. Well, yeah. it's good to know that it's not just us. Yeah, no, Lauren, guys. I, it's not just no, us. No, Lauren, if, if I don't know if you recall, like I I I also, I'm a like big NBA fan, so I remember you every time. You never told time, me that. I never told you that. It's it's a, it's a running it's a running gag. Oh, I always it is? Compare okay. He to can't NBA. he can't not bring it I up. Can't help it. But when Vince Carter was traded by the Raptors, right. every time he came back, he would show out and mm-hmm. just hit game winner after game winner, and they traded him for nothing too. So it was just double. It was just complete Toronto sports misery at its finest. But um. Gotcha. Uh, there Cabby, you, go. you were right. Cabby, you oh, were once. right. Patrick Line did score two it. goals against the Jets in December. There you Thanks go. Rob. It's like stump the Schwab over here. You got no, all no, of no, it. No, 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 no. Listen, let, uh, don't, uh, <laughs> let's not get carried away here. Okay? <laughs> that I, shows, my, I have to, have to bring that reference. That was a good show. <laughs> my, it was a great show. Uh, my, um, my sports watching revolves a, a, a lot around betting and stuff. So I'm, I pay attention to like a handful of players on each team and stuff. I, I don't follow any teams particularly that close um because i my interests are all about my checking account and who can fair, which players can benefit my checking account the most or most consistently hey so i sort of imagine you watching games is like you've seen the dark night where they have all of those televisions up that's what i imagine your living room like and you're just sitting <laughs> there just like just your They're, fingers bloody typing on your computer he has like all of these bets like, you're like the old stockbrokers from the 80s with the two the two handsets you're like this right. is too much power. Too power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna need like in the movie minority report where you need like tom yeah. cruise gets new eyeballs i'm gonna need new eyeballs because i'm gonna yeah. fry these ones with oh, the man. amount of screen time that i i subject oh. myself to it's it's the phone it's multiple laptops and then it's the television where i have like a you know the sports book here you know, uh, a group chat over here, one game there, and then a, a game on the on the screen. So I'm I'm toast in like ten years. Hopefully, maybe my consciousness can get ported over to some that like what is it? Chat GPD or what, what's what some some AI like program? an ex- like an exterior hard drive where you just ha- yeah. you can just you can yes. just go into it. Welcome you back. Welcome back. Welcome back, Cabby AI to the show. <laughs> yeah, right. welcome to the show. Much more handsome, wittier, funnier, way more information. And then like, there'll be an overlay over my face. So I'll just, I might just be a vegetable, but like what projects onto the screen in these things will just be like this, almost like a cartoon version of me just spitting out numbers and information. Hopefully it's better than the digital boards, the digital ads on the the thing. I don't know if anybody else saw, somebody actually tweeted it out. The pizza pizza? At one point, yes. At one point the board literally turned at like a 70 degree angle. And oh, I was no like, way. I don't know if I just had a seizure or if that really happened. And then I really want pizza pizza, pizza pizza now. And then someone tweeted it no, out. No, you don't. No, pizza don't. pizza is like, if we're doing power rankings of pizza in Toronto. Let's do the power rankings of pizza in Toronto. Let's do okay, that. Like in, in, it's, uh, it's okay. It's lower tier. This is They're not a sponsor, thank God. But <laughs> They're not. Okay. So I'll just go bottom five up. So go um, Pizzaville. 
Uh, then we go Domino's, then Brooklyn Pizza at the three, at the two Pizza Iolo, and then at the one Pizza Nova for me, and then Pizza Pizza, 27th. 27th. It's <laughs> like I or might Pizza 73 eat... out west. <laughs> True. Yeah, that is part of the Pizza Pizza family. Yeah, yeah. I might even eat. <laughs> 7-Eleven pizza before I eat pizza pizza. And yes, wow. and I, I know that's harsh. That's no, 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 that's okay. That's, are, that's deep. <laughs> Who are you? Deep cut. I'm sorry. Uh, we, it's the uh, cardboard. It's the cardboard. Because <laughs> I've, I've eaten pizza pizza since I was like 12. And it never it's never gotten better. The sauce, the the crust, it just, ne there are no improvements. It's the same. It just got more expensive and and more terrible. That was like oh. Papa John's was like that, right? Where they were like, listen, we know our pizza's awful. Tell us how to make it better. And then and they then, did. And now it's doing so much better. But mm, I if, I agree with they, your list. If they were smart, they would make their tagline. We know you only eat this when you're hammered. That's it. <laughs> yes. That's That should Embrace be the tagline. Yeah. Lean into the drunk, the drunk college kids, the drunk adults or whatever, like the, at the midnight to 3 a.m. crowd. Make that your business model and lean into that that demographic because it is fruitful and will always be there from you for you from like third Wednesday to Saturday for sure. Those four days. Yeah. That's like happy Absolutely. hour, midnight to three AM. Four a.m. four a.m. pizza pizza, just like I am inevitable. Yeah, we need uh we need <laughs> this there is what one, there was one on Queen West that was open. No, maybe it was three. I don't know if it was quite four, but that one was always you know, you roll there's out a couple of a 24 hour. There's a couple 24 hour uh, pizza pizzas uh, uh, during no, pride. The, yeah, there are the the pizza pizza on Church Street during pride stays open like basically 24 hours. They close oh, really? for like a couple hours, like pizza. super late at night. Oh, yeah. Because also during pride, pizza pizza is one of the only washrooms that you can access. So the line is like an hour and a half. Oh, That's my a, gosh. Wow. But it must be, it's, it must you know, be it's that or. Yeah, it's it's I actually gave I actually gave a woman CPR in one of those washrooms once during Pride. In real life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What did what? you see her collapse? Or what, what no, do you no, mean? I, this is not a game over story. Okay, it was but, just but, there was there was somebody that was in Oh, I'm assistance. if anybody's listening to this right now, my jaw it's audibly dropped. Um <laughs> we're gonna have to make that a separate podcast. Okay. Yeah, we'll we're gonna talk have about to... that when we don't have a guest. Yeah, it, basically, there was somebody anyway. that needed assistance. There was, there anyway, was the leaves. That, yeah. Anyway, she's fine. That's amazing that you saved somebody's life, Lauren. You now that's oh, like fine. that's your that's your like top shelf story forever. Is I saved somebody's life. Well, it was, I, and then I got a job at Game Over, and now because I'm a sports nerd, I'm like, <laughs> I'm just this big doofus. Somebody yeah, gave a YouTube you, channel to say, "Hey, go talk." <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, this is what happens when the when a, when a game goes one way and it's just a complete blowout on either side. The the place this is when we can kind of have fun and just just could talk about what pizza is the worst in Toronto for sure. Lauren, hold on, one more question, Lauren. When she sure. came to consciousness, yes. did she buy you a slice of pizza as a thank you? No, no, she did not. Well, no, she actually got taken away in an ambulance, and then I actually found I, later on I found the cop, and he actually said that she went back out clubbing. So. I guess she was fine. Uh, wow. <laughs> Happy bride. <laughs> she, wow. Yeah. She, she Never was down for the cause. Like there was. Yeah. She that's was, about, like, that's she, about being about that life. Literally. Yeah. About, yeah. about that life. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. That's the epitome of about that life. Like oh. I'm here. I'm Nobody here believed me when I'm I went here back. for a good time. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> and let's, let's, if we're going to talk about good times, should we talk about the world juniors? Since yeah. there wasn't a lot of good to talk about with the Leafs. Hey, Canada won guys. There you go. I mean, you know, it's like it's inevitable. If Canada doesn't win, people are mad. That's the only time. That's like the only sport in Canada where it's like if Canada doesn't win a, the gold in an international tournament, then everyone's like, "You losers!" Even though they're well, all in, like in high schoolers. Hockey in hockey. hockey, hockey. I, yeah. Do Do you think we have that much? We put that much pressure on the women's national soccer team. I don't know because they, 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 they did win know. gold at the Olympics, but we don't have world... to because Christine Sinclair is basically a god. She is, she's a G, she is certified. But yeah, for hockey, absolutely. That like the standard is gold medal. Like, there's nothing, nothing, nothing else for men, and men and women's hockey. Like, and 
Sarah Nurse, MPP, like, please continue winning gold medals because if not, then you're going to hear about it from us, uh, the entitled fans of Canada <laughs> hockey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and like, it, it's hard to forget, like when I see junior hockey, and I, I know producer Rob was talking to us about this, like, I know producer Rob likes to like, likes junior hockey. And then producer Rob was like, yeah, this is like, they're children. Like you have to remember, I forget that they are literally not even allowed to like their parents have to sign forms for them to go places. Like they're, they're kids. Like it's, yeah. you would forget. You're like, God, how did you miss that net? What's wrong with you? Then you realize like you're young at a TV and you're like, you're yelling at a, a child. And, like they would cry if you yell at them. Like it's, it's kind of sad in a sense, but. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I think uh, what we'll do is um, I just resp- I just said yeah, but I, nobody um, the stream spoke to me. It was I'm, I, we have producer Rob speaking to me, and then I just said yeah, and then nobody said anything to produce the yeah. So that was why I said that. Um, yeah, we have some questions here. Uh, Warrior Womp wants to know what's the best book in your study behind you. What's your favorite book? In your favorite study? book. Oh, favorite. Oh, thanks for asking. Um, favorite man, it's probably. Uh, the, I mean, you can't say all of them. No, 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 no. Cause I haven't read, I haven't read them all. <laughs> uh, my, like my wife is a chiropractor. She's got like medical texts in here. So like, at least. I was seven, wondering why you had a book that said well-adjusted babies. I was like, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and human body and you know, human locomotion. So, so your favorite book is how to readjust the spine. The spine. <laughs> Addition, addition 10, just, I don't know, like, um, probably, I mean, this is going to be such a cheesy answer, but like, well, two, it's either the tipping point from Malcolm Gladwell. I mean, it's, I know that's cheesy. It's a good, like, it's it's a good one. It's, it's, it's a, a good one. Such a famous book. And then because I'm like this, this one here, ah, uh, oh, don't pull down your whole bookshelf. It's not worth it. <laughs> I, this one about Michael Jordan, it's called When Nothing Else Matters. A writer followed the Washington Wizards for the two years that he played with the Wizards and got crazy access. And the stories about MJ are bonkers. Like I've this never dude, heard of that one. This, this came out, I think, in 05 or 06 or something. And I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan. And I'm obviously like a big Kobe guy too. So Kobe and MJ have that same maniacal competitive yeah. DNA. So just like reading stories, things like... MJ would pay, here's one story. MJ would pay the um, the grounds crew at the airport. He would give, before like, before a, a road trip, he would give a guy like 50 bucks or a hundred bucks and say, hey, make sure my bag gets off the plane first. And then he would bet a teammate a thousand that his bag would be the first one off the off the plane or like in the carriage, like off the private jet, the, the baggage carousel. And- you know, lo and behold, his bags first. And then he would, you know, the, the investment was a hundred, but then he'd make a thousand on the back end. So like net 900, but Jordan had, there's a bunch of those in this book. So I they, this yeah. one and the tipping point are my favorites. That's a good one. Thank, thank you for asking. Yeah. And then uh, uh, one, one question I got to ask um, about some of the people you've interviewed, because you've interviewed just like every person <clears throat> known to man, but as far as hockey players, I know like it's, we, it's kind of hard to get, personality out of these players i mean just because of the culture of the game they're not kind of allowed to but like is there a player that kind of surprised you as far as you know you didn't know what to expect when you interviewed them but they kind of just shit like their personality just shine through um the first person like two people come to mind jamie ben and steven stamkos i wrote this bit for jamie ben where he him him and tyler sagan called their moms as a prank and told their moms that they were gonna propose to their girlfriends. Neither of them had girlfriends at the time. And then the (laughs) twist was they asked their moms if they could use grandma's ring for the engagement and it (laughs) broke their mom's heart. That's so so mean. (laughs) (laughs) It's, it was a great bit. And I'd never met Jamie before, but I wrote it for him. We we flew to Dallas and I was like, hey, Jamie, do you wanna do, like I wrote you this, this prank. You want to do it? He's like, okay. So then we both went to Sagan's house and we shot it and oh uh, it was great. And then um, Stamkos, Steven Stamkos, the other one, cause he's, he's like, he's a serious guy and destined for the hall of fame. And, but like in our interviews, and I haven't done that many with him. 
he's he's always down for like the hijinks that I bring. We did a target shooting contest once. One time I was his acting coach for this commercial and he did a bunch of uh, a bunch of characters in it. So those two guys are the first that come to mind. Wow, good uh, answers. Yeah. So how did uh, like how did you like kind of get like I I, I want to get like like a little bit of the like give us a bit of the origin story like how did you get going to like finding all these famous athletes like I remember like watching like I mean you know, I was you know, maybe like for two thousand six two thousand five where I'd see you watch like you'd be interviewing Kobe Bryant and I'm like this Kobe Bryant was like the most famous athlete in the world at that time um, arguably at that yeah, in the yeah, late two thousands and I'd be like. Yeah. And like, you were like, and I'd see you and like, you were young in the game. And I'm like, how, like, how did this come to be? So how did the cabbie persona sort of start? Well, it was, I started in Toronto and just randomly harassing people on the street. Yeah, on the street. I would go to like, yeah, young and Bloor, young and King. I would go to U of T. I would go to Humber college, North campus, South campus, hey, Ryerson. Right. I would go to York and be in very hall, just waiting, just trying to like interview <laughs> random people walking, like going from psych class to, you know, uh, uh, sociology 101 or whatever. It was. <laughs> so that was in, um, I started in 01. And the first one that really kind of stuck was a, a segment called Cabby on the street hockey, where I would go, approach like challenge random people to play at busy intersections in Toronto. We played in front of Maple Leaf. So we would just wait for the cars and the lights and the, ga the, the game would go up to one. My producer was the goalie. I was where like, I, I would like pick people who were like on their way to work or like on their lunch break. So they'd be in dress shoes. So I had an advantage. So it's, you know, we had the orange ball, you know, one, two, three, go. And um, so from there, I actually, my, one of my breaks was getting access to the Maple Leafs. And I got to shout out Wade Belak, who was the first Leaf that I ever interviewed. Yeah. And on wow. that day, I also interviewed, I believe, Darcy Tucker. And Whew. good combo. Yeah. And there was Some somebody there. else. I don't think I, I think I got to Sundin as well. I think I got to the captain um, in that time in like 02. Yeah. And then that's once I once I sort of broke through that barrier of getting to athletes, it's still hard to get access to these guys. Like even now, I, we, you know, we sent a, a request to interview Matt, Mitchie and Austin together and they're like, mm, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean? Wow. Like those Mitchie's on a heater and, and Matthew's yeah. a heart trophy winner. Like, let me get let me just chop it up with these dudes. They're like, mm, we got to think about it. So even though I've been, I'm established in my career, it's still challenging now, but back in the day, like breaking through and getting into the dressing rooms in hockey and the locker rooms in basketball and eventually locker rooms in football and the clubhouses in baseball, that, that really changed the game for me, but it started in Oh one, bro. It's been, yeah, it's been wow. a minute. Wow. Yeah. It, so who is somebody like, because I could probably go through the list of people like you, you have, like you haven't <laughs> interviewed, but like, who is somebody that you haven't, gotten a chance to sit down with that you're like dying like your all-time dream to sit down with a per that person well all-time dream would probably be tiger and to make tiger laugh and like tiger is <laughs> notoriously guarded he does laugh but like he's always so careful and he's just so particular he doesn't do that many interviews um it'd be awesome to interview like sit down with jay-z that yeah. would be dope i've only i've like I mean, the it's, ultimate, well, now it's Messi, Leo Messi or Kylian Mbappe. And I don't know how good either of them speak English. Because I know Messi doesn't do very many in interviews at all. And then Mbappe, obviously he's French. Je peux parler français un petit peu, mais je peux pas. <laughs> Lauren can help you out. That's all I got. I, je peux pas. Well, Lauren speaks French, I think. Oh, she Not that well. No, no, no. No, I thought you did. Don't I'm put sorry. that on me. Oh my goodness. No, I fake it. I, I, I'm just good at faking accents. I, I almost failed grade nine French and that was the last of it for me. So did you? Oh, oh, grade grade nine close. French is like je suis oh. two A, il a. It was it was tough. It was tough. I wasn't I wasn't, I wasn't a very goal. smart guy. I wasn't very smart. I mean, I'm slightly smarter now, but <laughs> and then well, uh, it's, good, it's good, it's good to see that you, there have been some improvements over the thank years. Thank you, thank you. And then of course, I I, I can't leave without talking about. The I like I think the most iconic interviews that you've had were obviously with the late great Kobe Bryant. And 
So I, I found that when I watched these interviews, anything with him, he is the most, he was the most unintentionally funny people I've ever seen because he was so serious all the time. Yeah. But sometimes he has those, he's like Captain Holt from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, just like deadpan, nice. serious, Great but, just, but just like hilarious. So like, like, tell me about like how that started, like uh, how that went, it, how that came about. You know, I met him in Toronto at a, on a media availability and the night before there was a leaf game and then there was a snowstorm. So the day we went to the air Canada center, there was, there were no other crews there because of the snowstorm. People like, ah, you know, this is 2005. The Lakers weren't great. I think Kobe won the scoring title that year, but I don't, I, they, they were the eight seed. They played the Suns in the first like round. 80, that might be the eighty-one point. That might be it was the shot. eighty-one point season yeah. against the Raptors in LA. That was that was bonkers. So I just like started accosting him about bandwagon fans, and in the same piece, I interviewed the LA Kings were in town around the same time. So at that time, wow. I think Jeremy Roenick was on the Kings. Uh, oh my gosh, who else was on there? Um, That's a great my- two for one. Yeah. yeah, like can you say yeah, Kobe yeah. Bryant? Well, not it was, bad. It was when they they wore their black and purple sweaters, which those had nice. a run of maybe it was what ten years. Those sweaters before underrated, the- underrated sweaters. Not yeah, gonna underrated. I don't know. Good throwback. Know. Just what do you think? What do you think of? Okay, so the while we're while we're talking about that, do you think that the All Star Game this year? Do you get special access to All Star Games in general? Uh, no, not um, no, not not particularly. I I gotta wait in like. They put the all stars like on these pods, and you'll see the like if you're or there are football fans watching usually like that week of the, the combine, Super Bowl. right? The no, like the, not not the, the combine. Media. The, like media, the media, the media thing where there's stages all the way down the yeah. field, like many stages. That's right. That's right. And each player sits at a stage, and there's like a throng of reporters in the front. So the all star game, all star weekend, is similar to that. And I haven't been to one in a while, actually. Uh, the last time I went, I went. The last time I went to one was. I want to I want to say 09 and I I have a few stories from that. We were in Montreal and I was I was rolling with Carrie and it was like it was fun. Like going <laughs> and this is when Carrie Carrie was outside back then. Like he, he was like anyway. Um so I don't I don't get special access. I get the same as everybody else and um this year in Florida it should be pretty cool. I I like the oh I by the way Panthers reverse retro, I think is the top. I think I'll rank number one of the, in my, in my books, Florida. And then, um, that was a good one. Yeah. It was a good one. And I like that baby blue teal is fire. And then, uh, yeah, there's that pretty good too. But Florida I think is the best one. What did you think of the, the, uh, the sharks with the golden seal throwback? Where it was the shark's name, but in the golden seal colors, that was pretty. And it, and it had that it's like the golden seal font that, too, right? Yeah, yeah, those, yeah, are fire. yeah. those are fire. I, I rock with those. I'm I'm in Calgary right now, and the Calgary Reverse Retro, bottom three. They just have no. like that horizontal <laughs> stripe along the the pedestal. Yeah, uh, yeah, the pedestal and isn't the there like choice. some sort of like demon on this front or something like with a like? Isn't there like I, I don't know what that is. It's like. A, yeah, like Blasty is, is Blasty the, is the horse. Blasty, Blasty. Is the horse with the fire. I've never yeah. heard that before in my life. I, well, because I just remember what? Toronto. I remember these logos from NHL 02. <laughs> that's when I that's why <laughs> that's why I got into the game playing on EA Sports, but uh like the first game. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's uh, I, but, uh I I'm a you, I'm a sucker for the for the Anaheim Ducks, the Mighty Ducks. Jerseys. Yeah, those I'm are those with the white those. pants too. Those are dope. Those yeah. are dope. The Absolutely. Detroit ones. And I know Toronto plays Detroit on on Saturday. I don't think it's a reverse retro night. I actually haven't I haven't looked. But those one those that one in Chicago, very disappointing. Just yeah. like they're the same. Just put the name of the city. And that's they're the it. same. They're, they're like, the hey, do you like? Hey, ever thought of black on red? Just put the name of the city. It's genius. It's genius, guys. It's gold. <laughs> that's what they said. That that was that was, was the a, marketing meeting. Yeah, Absolutely. You you know that like the 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 homework was handed in at the last minute for those oh, like yeah. they spent a lot of time on like. Florida, Anaheim, uh, Phoenix, like the, like some of the really colorful ones, even the Montreal with the baby blue. And then they just like, oh man, what do we forget? Chicago, Detroit? Nah, uh, we're missing something. Ah, you're missing. I knew it. Uh, yeah, just there you go. Put black stripe, then it's not the same. <laughs> Let's just do yeah. this. Magic. Just leave that as a. It was almost like the template 
uh, jersey, like on a on a on a presentation. It's like, all right, yeah. just leave that for now, and then we'll change it later. <laughs> Never got changed. Someone forgot to change it. Now, what what you could do, Cabby, since you are in Calgary and it is winter time, you could go to the All Star Game. Just saying, you should go. Nice and warm in Florida. Are you guys going? Are you all going? No. no. If you're no. paying for it, I will if go anywhere. I I could go. I could fly to Florida and uh, and and be like, hey, does anybody want to let me in? I, Anybody I have a that. free media pass? I may have a free media pass. I, I could be like a scalper, but like looking for media pass. Media pass? <laughs> looking for media pass here? Uh, media pass? Yeah, that, that's what I was it, trying to it, do. But... It should be cool. I don't know how they're going to top Vegas. Like Vegas was oh, amazing. Yeah. And I know people like all-star weekends and all the sports are kind of controversial. Baseball is probably the best game, but like the most yeah. boring of all the, it's just the home run derby, which is cool, but. We should add some other things and football tries to do things different. Obviously hockey does like the Vegas on the fountain of the Bellagio. Like that was yeah. amazing. So I, I don't know if like they may, have, they should have maybe retired the all-star game after Vegas. Cause it was tremendous as far as like the presentation, the show, the entertainment, I lived there for two years and the competition level in Vegas for entertainment is the best in on the continent. I mean, it's the, yeah. it's the world famous playground. What happens there stays there. And um, and even even the Golden Knights presentation at games, at, at whoever has been to a Golden Knights game will can attest to this. It's the best in the NHL, what they do on the ice. And obviously the team is great too. But um, if you do end up getting there, I, I don't think I'll be there this year. Good luck, first of all. And secondly, hopefully you guys can have an idea or two. You can slip it to the right person to change an event to give it uh to give it that that pageantry that it deserves yeah i mean i mean vegas has to be compete because they're competing with david copperfield and stuff like that that's like right. that, like hockey's got a like, and cirque de soleil dr and soleil lady gaga, lady gaga, gaga that's who's there. so you and gotta be usher and you know and, and then the list just, goes on the list does go on and there's some adult establishments that are also highly entertaining that's uh <laughs> That's the, the really dope after midnight. That's kind of that 12 to three. Vegas after hour. dark. That's <laughs> and, what the glow in the dark Jersey is for. So that you can find your way in those. That's venues. Right. You can find your and way in you, your Uber. You can go to the store and buy a $12 bottle of water probably on the strip. So, <laughs> but, uh, Fast. Gabby, this was absolutely awesome. Thank you for joining. It's, uh, you know, it's a good thing that the game, I, 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 you know, sometimes it's good that the game was kind of like, you know, a wash because it's, you know, I like to get these kind of organic little stories out, little, little tidbits, and then uh, just kind of like riff about it. But uh, yeah, can you give the Leaf fans a little bit of hope for the season? I know we, we started off with this, but let's leave on a note of hope. Like, what are you, what are you saying to Leaf fans to- As a to betting man. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. I am optimistic about the team's future. There, there you, you know, there has to come a point where the Leafs do the thing, get past the first round. They advance past the first round, and we're only there you go. We're, we're only at you know game thirty nine or whatever it was you said, Lauren. There's yep. a lot of season left. There are forty something games left. Somebody else on Toronto is bound to go on a heater. Maybe not like Mitchie's heater, but another heater is on the way, and hopefully that heater is in the playoffs, and that run will be lengthy and. Um, and satisfying to the fan base. But like you, Fawad, I'd say relax. Yeah, relax, guys. Listen, Cabby says relax. That means you got to relax. All right, everybody. Like Frankie says relax. Cabby says relax. Cabby says relax. Oh, great t-shirt, by the way. I didn't I didn't see that until just now. Nice. Oh, yeah. It's nice, shout right? Out to the, shout out if to you want one, you can, check oh, down, both... you can check down here. Can you, can you buy those? Oh, yes. yeah. Yes, okay, absolutely. I'm going to purchase one. I'm going to purchase on one. SD, Thank you guys so you much go. for having me. I'm on. sure just, we can arrange to send you one. We just no, no, sold his shirt. Sure can arrange it. We just sold a shirt live on yes. the air. I love yes, it. Did. It sells itself, everybody. It sells itself. I am basically like, I have just I have just done the sell this pen. Sell me this pen. I sold you this shirt. Let's go. Thank everybody, you. from Game Over Toronto, my name is Fuad Suleiman. You can follow me on the socials at, at Fuad underscore sports, including the TikTok, which is it's quite fun. The TikTok. My name is Lauren Williamson. You can find me on Twitter at Lauren in the six cabbie. Shut yourself up, pump your own tires. Tell us what's going on with you and what you got going down the pipeline. My name is Cabby Richards. You can find me on Twitter at Cabby doing a bunch of foolishness. And 
salute to my crew, SN Bets. You can follow that that crew as well at SN Bets. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. I appear the Leafs will win. That is a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Well, we gotta get, bring you back to every game then. <laughs> <laughs> our fourth, our our fifth host, everybody. Back there you go. You. Thank you, everybody. Peace. Have a good night. by Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook.